Hi everybody. Today I want to walk you through creating some basic gauges like these in DGLUX5. We'll use just a few basic DGLUX5 components to create gauges that update in real time based on our data and dashboards that are fully responsive. The first thing that you'll want to do is add a group to your stage. I like to give it a height and width of 300 because it's a good size for working on gauges. And give it a fill of some color that's subtle but lets you see where your group begins and ends. Now in that group, insert a scale track. This you'll want to be a bit smaller than the group itself. I'll make it 250 by 250 pixels. And you'll want it to be centered in the group. So you'll click center in this gadget and enter zero and zero, which means that it's zero pixels from the center. For the track in our example, we'll use a radius of 80%, start angle and end angle of negative 120 and 120, and a thickness of 25%. Now, this first track that I've laid down will be the gray track in this gauge. It's the light gray piece that defines the entire gauge and not the colored piece that indicates how much of the gauge is filled in. I'll change the track fill gradient to be all one color. I'll delete the yellow color stop in the middle by right clicking it. And I'll set the beginning color and the end color to the same shade. Now I'll duplicate that track, and for the second one, I'll pick a different color. And I'll change the end angle, just so I can see what my gauge will look like when it's done. Next I'll add a text component, center it in my gauge, And I'll take the entire group and I'll set the scaling to fit ratio. And what that means is when my gauge, when my group shrinks on a responsive dashboard, the components will keep the same aspect ratio relative to one another. So that won't happen right now. See things move around at different rates. But with a scaling of fit ratio, everything will stay together. The final thing I'm going to do before I convert it to a symbol is just change the opacity of my entire group to 80% just for visual effect. Now I'm going to convert my group to a symbol and start editing that symbol. Now to do that you have to enter a special symbol editing mode where any changes you make affect any instance of this symbol. Now in here, in the symbol editing mode, I'm going to go to the data flow for the symbol, and I'm going to add two data flow blocks. One is a scale block, which you can find under math operations. And the other is going to come from my data tree. I'm using DSA, which you'll recognize if you're using it as well. I'm going to use the system DS link. Um, you can use any, any live data you like for these gauges. I'll take the CPU usage to start. This is a load value block. And for different instances of the symbol, it's going to be uh, reporting on different data metrics. So, so that I don't confuse myself, I'm going to change the name of the block to load value so that it's more generic. But right now it is indeed reporting the CPU usage. I'm going to take this value and make it the input of my scale block. This is a percent you can see here, which means its minimum is zero and its maximum is 100. And what I'm translating it to is a gauge angle for this blue piece for which the minimum is negative 120 and the maximum is positive 120. And what this scale block does is it takes this input value from this scale 
and translates it to the proportionate value in this scale. So you see it's about negative 110, which is very close to the start of our gauge, negative 120, which makes sense because our gauge is only going to be about 4 or 5% full. So we'll bind this to my end angle. And you can see only a small part of my gauge is filled in using this live CPU usage data. If I click apply, that is applied to the instance of the symbol on my stage. Now I want to make my symbol customizable so that I can have a few instances of the symbol like this and make minimal edits to each one. I don't want to have to create each of these from scratch. So I'm going to expose some parameters of my symbol. I'm going to right click the symbol, still in the symbol editing mode, and go to edit properties. And here I'm going to create four properties and you'll see why as we move along. But I'll start with a number to represent the value. You can see in this symbol parameters dialog you have data types on the left which you drag and drop into the right. And then you can rename by double clicking the label. So I added a number and called it value. I'm adding a string and calling it description. A second string and calling it path. And a fill. Now I want the text box in the center of my gauge to display the gauge's value. So if my value were 99, I would want that to be displayed in my gauge, like so. And if I chose a yellow color, I would want the text to have that color. And I would want my track fill to have that color. Now in my data flow, I want the path of this load value block to change depending on which data metric I specify. So I'm going to copy the path that's in there now to CPU usage, paste it in my symbol parameter, and then link that symbol parameter to the data flow block. So now anytime I change this path for any symbol, that will change the value that is obtained for the scale block. Now that I've added some symbol parameters, I can exit symbol editing mode and work on my dashboard a little bit. So I'm going to set the stage to have a horizontal layout. Make sure to turn on wrapping. Here I'll duplicate this symbol so that you can see we definitely want a little bit of space between the symbols. So I'm going to add gaps of 10 pixels. And we also want a little bit of space between the cards and the edges of the dashboard. So I'm going to click this button to make all of these paddings the same and then make them all 10 as well. I'll also um, turn on some scrolling for the dashboard. Now I can start filling in the parameters of some of these gauges. I'll start by filling in the path and description parameters. The path, um, as you'll recall, will fill in the path of that load value block that we added to the data flow for the symbol. And to get that path, I want to grab metrics from my metrics panel here. So I'll start with this CPU usage path. I'll grab it. And then before dropping it, I'll hold Option and Control. And that pastes the path. Then I'll repeat that for the other gauges. I'll use disk usage for the second one. Drag it to path and hold option and control. For the third one, I'll take memory usage. Hold option and control. And for the fourth gauge, I'll use processes. You can see they all have different values, but now we want the values to be displayed here. This first symbol is CPU usage, so I'm going to drag the CPU usage value to my value and enter this expression. 
You can see the binding page on the wiki for more information on the expressions you can use here, but basically using this one ensures that I get a number with a precision of one decimal point and a percent symbol after it, which is correct for this value. So I'll click OK. There you can see this value is mirrored here. Now I'll just repeat this with the others. like so. And one more. And this last one is different because it's not a percent. So I'll just accept the value. I can choose a different fill for each of these gauges. Now we're pretty close to having a functional dashboard. First, I'll add a title. I think that's the most important thing that's missing. So I'll go into my symbol and edit it. I'm going to add a text component. I'm going to choose a smaller size and um, I'm going to make sure that it's the whole width of the group so that it will center properly. And I want to have a rule under it like this. So to do that, I'm just going to go to the fill and stroke properties for that text box and add only a bottom border like so. That's how I want that to look. And then I want this text here to be the description for my symbol properties. So I'll go into symbol properties and link that to the text value. I can put something here if I want to visualize it here. And then I click apply and you can see that it populates through all of my gauges. They now have a useful title at the top. Now from here we can visually adjust a little bit. I think the title should be a little bit taller. And I think that the rest of the items in my gauge should move down a little bit. Like so. Now we're very close to having this dashboard. What we're missing is these ticks, which help us visualize how close we are to the next five or the next 10. Um, so to add those, enter symbol editing mode one last time. And in my gauge, I'll insert some scale ticks. I'll give these the same radius as my tracks and also the same height and width and center them just like my tracks are. And they'll be in the same place. Now, of course, I need to give those ticks a color that will make them visible. and choose a number of them that I want. Right now I have 11 major ticks, the longer ones, which is an appropriate number of them to have for a scale of 100. That's every 10, including zero. And I have two minor ticks in between each consecutive pair of major ticks, um, which is maybe not ideal right now. Maybe I want one or three. Like say I want one and now I have a tick at every 10 and a tick in every five. Or maybe I want three and now they're at 2.55. 7.5 and 10. I like that, so I'll click apply and okay. And now my dashboard is done. I can save it and view it in my browser. You can see it is responsive. I made this rule black, so I might want to make my background black or change the rule to white. Um, there are a number of ways you can customize this. You can see here we used two DigiLux circles that you just draw using the circle tool. And we use that to indicate the space of our track instead of two overlapping tracks. 
Also, instead of a track that fills and empties like this, you could use a needle that travels along the major and minor ticks. To create a needle, all you would need to do would be add some sort of shape, like for example, a triangle. This one isn't showing up because it has no fill and stroke, so you would just add that. You can move this right here, this point in the center is the anchor point of rotation. And if you move that to be the center, then when you rotate the needle, it rotates around the gauge center. So then all you would need to do would be to link the value of your gauge to this rotation property of this triangle instead of to the end angle of this track. So that's one idea um, is to use a needle. Another thing you could do would be you could use scale tracks that are a full circle by sending, setting them to negative 80 and 180. Like so. So one last thing that I'll show you is to how to create a track that changes colors depending on what value. So say you want it to be blue if it's under 60 and then green if it's between 60 and 80 and then red if it's a high temperature over 80 degrees. So the way that you would create something like that is by binding the value not only to the end angle, but also to the fill. And when you do that, you want to create a number mapping. So I'm just gonna create somewhere for there to be a number, I'll create a text component. And I'll say that I'm taking the value of this text component and binding it to the color of this track. And I'll hold control when I create this binding to open the binding dialog. Now in this dialog, I'm going to create a number mapping. Let's say everything up to 60, I want to be this color. Everything up to 80, I want to be this color. And everything above 80. I think this is how you do this. I want to be this color. So I'll click OK. Click OK. And now I'll try changing the value of this text box. OK. Looks like 60 and below are behaving correctly. Right? 60 to 80, I want to be green. So that's my ideal range, and that's appearing correctly. And then above 80, I want to be this color. So that is how you do that. You create a number mapping using the binding dialog. And there are step-by-step -step instructions for that on the wiki if you want to read more. Thank you guys for watching. Those are a few tips and tricks for creating custom gauges. I hope this helps you realize the vision that you have for your dashboard.